Welcome back to Cradle to Grave R. My name is Mark Gingrass, and today we're going to be talking about, yes, tibbles and tribbles, not double dribbles and not double treble, but tibbles and tribbles. You're like, what? What is he talking about, and why is he trying to be funny? Well, let's jump right into it like we always do. First, let's create a data frame. You know, we, we've, we've done this before, so let's just do, um, we're going to do grades. We're going to call that grades one, and we're going to jump right in with creating a data frame. Now, it's not so hard to create a data frame, but if you haven't done it in a while, you can do uh, data.frame and then open parentheses. So we can use our white space to our advantage to kind of keep things organized. We'll call this first name, or we'll just call it first, and we're going to set that equal to a vector of strings. So Mark, Dave, Jackie, right? Next thing, last name. So we'll do last name is a vector of strings. My last name, Gingrass, we'll do Doe, and we'll do Smith. And see how they line up. And then for, for the third one, we'll do uh, the actual grade is equal to a vector of um, numerics. So we'll do, let's see, I got a 94 because I'm just so smart. Dave probably got like a 79 because he's cheated a little bit. And then Jackie got a 68 because she does not know how to program. All right, we run that and we all of a sudden have grades up here in the right hand corner. We have grades one, three observations of three variables. Let's click on it. It looks like that. We've seen this before. It's so simple. So let's close that out. Let's actually, for funsies, let's go ahead and print this by just typing in grades one. And let's see what it looks like here. So it just shows first, last grade. Uh, it doesn't tell you the types or anything like that. Same thing if you typed it up here. If I did grades one, it would be the same thing. See down below, it doesn't tell you what type it is. So that's a data frame. Now, let's do another one, grades two. This time though, we're gonna do the same exact thing, except we're gonna make it into a tibble. So copy this whole thing. In fact, let's just co copy and paste it and just make it grades two. And this time, instead of data frame, we'll call this a, ooh, a tibble. But we didn't load the library yet, so let's do that. So up on line number one, let's insert our tidy verse. So this is a package that contains all kinds of tidy type packages included um, that you're going to be finding useful. So if you don't have it, packages install tidyverse. So now that we've installed the tidyverse, we can use a tibble. So data frame, we're going to change to tibble. And don't forget, I made this to grades two. So I just copied and pasted it, made it grades two. Hit enter. Now you see on the top right hand side, we have three observations of three variables for grades two. Click on it. It doesn't look any different from grades one. It looks the exact same. It's supposed to be, um, it's supposed to do that. It's actually going to inherit like all of the functionality of a data frame for the most part. And, and you really shouldn't see the difference in your everyday uh, exploration and analysis. A tibble and a data frame are very similar, but a tibble uh, takes away some of the broken stuff that a data frame, it's not really broken, but some of the things that are not useful, and then it adds useful things. For example, if I do grades two and I do command enter or control enter, you will see down here, not only does it have first, last, and grade, it tells you what type they are. So, oh, sorry about that. So what type is it? It's a character, character, and a double. So it's a little bit more functional when you use it. That doesn't affect anything. You can still use it as a data frame. Nobody will know the difference for the most part. Now, that being said, also if you had multiple uh, features or columns, so to speak, let's say you had 30 or 40 columns, it, would, it wouldn't print them all out like a data frame would. You know, the data frames would print out basically all of the columns, so you'd have just, it would just not look pretty aesthetically, but it's still the same thing. Anyways, let's get to this thing called the triple. The triple will do grades three. In fact, no, we're not gonna copy and paste this. So grades three, equals a triple, like I've never heard of a triple. Yeah, me neither till today. So it's it's just something that helps you kind of visually see things a little differently. I like it because it really does represent what the data looks like when you see it in this type of view, like grades one, you see across the columns is the features or the variables, first, last, and grade, right? So let's go ahead and do a triple. A triple is nothing more than a tibble though, by the way, so. 
It's just a way that we're gonna we're going to initiate this tribble a different way than we initiate the tibble. Notice in the tibble, we have our first, last, and grade going down like this, and then our data is to the right in these column vectors. So with a tribble, we do it slightly different. We use this little tilde, and we say, okay, that's the first name, comma, tilde, last name, comma, tilde, grade. And I made that lowercase, comma. It looks kind of funky right now, but bear with me. So the first name, I actually, I actually can just say Mark, last name, Gingrass, and finally we have, uh, my grade was a 94, comma, Dave Smith, or Doe, Dave Doe, comma, whatever he had, 79, comma, Jackie, and then we will do Smith, comma, and then she got a 68. Now I can use white space to my advantage. Let's just put in like a couple more spaces. One, two, three, one, two, three. Uh, line them up best you can, right? Grades, one, two, three, four, five. Just line them up. White space doesn't matter in this case. So I'm gonna do command enter on that or control enter. No errors, look at grades three up to the top, three observations of three variables, click on it, it looks the exact same. But we initiated a tibble differently. So this is a tibble, this is also a tibble, but the tibble was initiated by using the tribble function, and that tribble function knows, if you line these up as if they're columns of some sort of Excel file or spreadsheet, so it knows how to create a tibble that looks like this, using this notation or this syntax. It's really interesting. It's just a different way to initiate a tibble. They're both tibbles, I think. Now, if you come down here to the console and you type in class and you type in grades one, you'll see that you'll get a, it just says data frame. So a data frame is a data frame. If you do class grades two, what you get is a list here or a vector of strings that say uh, TBL, DF, TBL, and data frame. So this TBL, DF is basically uh, a combination of a tibble and a data frame. And if you do class grades three, you will see that you get the exact same thing. Because I told you that the grades two and the grades three, tribble and a tibble, return the same thing, a tibble or a tbldf, which I believe this means it basically inherits, inherits from a tbl and a data frame class. That's what that means. So the tbl underscore df inherit, inherits from the data frame class and the tbl class. Now we didn't get into classes at all, but just know that a tibble data frame or a tibble basically for our purposes will be the exact same thing as a data dot frame. Please, if you think these videos are useful, um, subscribe, and there'll be two videos at the end. If you click on one, you'll see some more, and hopefully you'll be learning more R. So see you next time.